During an interactive meeting at the Gibraltar Primary School, the Finance Minister Winston Jordan urged residents to take up the opportunities at TechVoc training, most of which is free. Even if you got 19 ones, why are you looking for a job as a clerk? Eh? A clerk in the public service, if you're lucky, you'll get six or four thousand minimum wage. But if you were to say, okay. I'm going to TI for the next year and a half, too, and I can do this well in course with my 19 ones. You know, two years after, how much you're going to be earning? Because you'll be snapped up. You'll be snapped up by Tolo or Exxon or any one of these oil industries that are here. You know how much you'll be earning. The minister also called for a return of what he described as the community spirit, which is so lacking in many communities across Guyana. Like I see a sign mark, Fryrich Gibraltar Cooperative. That is, that is how we bought villages when we were finally freed, quote unquote, from slavery, by pooling our pennies and so on that we hid from the masters. And we bought villages. There's nothing, there's nothing shameful about these things, but it's, everything is shameful about a community that got so much grass growing, so much clogged up drains, so much garbage around the place. Something is wrong. And I don't see why a community can't come together and sub a little thousand dollar here and a little 500 here and so on and say government listen this is how much we were able to put together can you help us with some forks some bins some so on so that we could clean up this community you also encourage residents to take up the opportunities to pursue a free education whenever the opportunity arises this comes on the heels of a promise by president granger to return ghana to free education from nursery to the tertiary levels we have to take care of this freeness whenever it comes. And comrade, don't look for it next year. It can't be implemented next year, right? So don't say, oh, the government had a whole and get free education and they didn't give you it. It can't happen next year, right? It will eventually happen and it will happen in a structured manner. Following the interactive meeting, several of the residents spoke to InfoHub and shared their views on how the meeting went. I am so glad that the finance minister came to our district because he is the man that is looking after the finances and he's the right man to come. A wonderful opportunity for us to know what the government has to offer, but I'm here mainly to talk with the minister about a program that I'm already benefiting from, the SLED program and other programs that they offer. So I can testify that those things that he mentioned, they're real, they're happening and they're there for the people. I'm glad that he come here and I'm glad to talk to him because of my son going to Farish Primary. I'm living Kilcoy instead, really. And I'm um, asking for a bridge that he can get access to come to school. I now take you to Isaiah Raffet in Crabwood Creek. Thank you, Paul. To improve security in the Crabwood Creek community, Minister of Public Security, Kemraj Ramjatan, has committed to providing a number of street lights for the residents. The residents believe that having the lights would help to curb crime in the community. Sometimes you come in a dark, come and just wait for you. You, you see him before he see you. So the street light them really, really needed in Crab Creek. Really, really. Like Malali area, well Tank area, this Balfield area, really, really need the street lights. It's very emergency if you get them out early as possible. Because this is the area where the most thief them really there own. But they're not the light. For the people, them is a good thing to do. Um, help the um, community in getting street lights. But the minister also explain and tell them that they will have to pay like $300, help pay the money for put up all these street lights. Them, if they do, if the community come together, the money is nothing for the pay because the community is very big and everywhere can get street light in Crabwood Creek and it can avoid crime, safety for people coming in the night and everything like that. However, 
Minister Ramjatan called on the residents and the Neighborhood Democratic Council to play their role in maintaining the lights. You cannot do anything free in this country, you got to pay. Otherwise you will bankrupt the, the, the GPL with all wanting lights free of charge and all of that. And that is what the point I was drilling home to them. I am very glad that a number of them appreciate that there must not be free lunches, but that they must pay for it. And that is what we're going to do um, more and more in all the communities. If the NDC can take the responsibility to pay for street lights, as is the law, that is what they're supposed to pay for, and then take the money from the citizens, the $300, and pay for the street lights, it will be a wonderful country. And that will help to deter crime. Also part of the meeting was Minister within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Jaipal Sharma. Minister Sharma was able to hear the concerns of residents. He also committed to return with a team of engineers who will be able to address their concerns. Reporting from Crabwood Creek, I am Isaiah Braffitt with videographer Anil Silal for InfoHub. And I will hand you over to Natisia, who's over in Blackbush Polder. Thank you, Isaiah. Here in Yakasuri South, residents breathe a sigh of relief after a commitment was made to reduce the cost of rent paid for land. PAP. The zone appear rent to lands and survey. And the house slot people them appear to NDC. NDC. Two acre and a half appear thousand dollar acre. And the zone lot is zero point something acre. Pay and I pay fifty and forty thousand. At the community meeting, residents engaged Honorable Minister of Business, Hemraj Hachkumar, with their concerns. Throughout this country we have visited, there are communities that have the same problem like you. Bad road, water, electricity, drainage. But listen, we would have inherited the circumstances. And we've been working together in all the regions to, to see how best we could raise or alleviate the standards to solve these problems. Some of the concerns listened to include the rehabilitation of a main access bridge as well as several internal roads. Member of Parliament Renard Ward told residents that although Guyana is expecting its first oil soon, Guyana needs its farmers. Agriculture is what has kept Guyana going for centuries and with the oil coming in I can only ask that we as farmers put agriculture in front and with the government support utilizing the oil revenues build the infrastructure that we can boost agriculture make it into a, a industry we now head over to anara khan in wim on the quarantine coast minister ali Kok, pointing to the improvements in the regional public health care system has described the delivery of health care as second to none he also emphasized that the coalition has been bridging the gap in the education sector we see the parallel education to our own our own um, education because education is there too so many times i've heard <coughs> developers saying you know we are going to take education into the hinterland or to the armenian people i prefer to hear them say we are going to share education and that is what is happening now this is what is happening are we sharing education so the uh, the playing field is getting more level so we could say yes we could compete now we, I, I could really compete here now on the recent misguided attempts by certain sections of the society to cause distrust among the citizens minister ali Kok emphasized that the coalition government lives up to the country's motto one people one nation one destiny further he encouraged the residents to collaborate to develop their area our aim is to ensure that the people the Guyanese people get a good life by truly understanding what it means to be working towards that good life. We also would like to say to, the, to you, the people, that you have a role to play. You have a role to play, and that is why you have to understand the system of governance. Minister Ali Kok also met with scores of residents who raised their concerns and pledged to have them addressed promptly. One matter he resolved immediately was a request for sports supplies for youth in the community. Minister Ali Kok made the presentation of several footballs. 
The residents acknowledged the minister for his visit as they pledged to work together to further develop their community. I now hand you over to Kellon, who tells us about his meeting in New Amsterdam. Thank you, Anara. Over here in the town of New Amsterdam, the residents came out in their numbers and they had so much to thank the government for. We've built new roads in a lot of communities and I'm quite sure you in Region 6, you are proud of the roads that we have done in this small four years. Many of the roads which you complained about, you are now beneficiaries for better roads. Martin Christopher was one of the persons who would have benefited from the new roads and those lights that were installed in the town of New Amsterdam. This is what he had to say. We are so thankful to the government for the light they give unto us. We are thankful for the road because when I went there, we had to walk in mud and water. Now we are walking on pitch road. We will now join Ms. Natasha Smith, who is in the village of Betsy Grung in Kanji. Residents of Betsy Ground and surrounding communities were given the opportunity to meet with Minister of State Don Hastings Williams and Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan to have their issues addressed. Not just my street alone, a lot of our streets in Port Ardenons. And I'm here because of that. I want good roads, better roads. While addressing the issues raised, the ministers also highlighted some of the accomplishments of the coalition government since taking office in 2015. The records are there to show that within the first year of being in office, this administration held local government elections, which, was, which had not been held for more than two decades after it was legally due. Two decades, the Constitution was ignored. 20 years. Your government, knowing that these services must come to the people, establish our open commission and new passport office to the tune of 57.5 million. You now also have access to school feeding program. That school feeding program to the tune of 45 million. The members of the Guyana Police Force, what have they done for the people in regions five and six? They are bringing down. Right. Right. You tell me. Right. Yes, they are bringing down some gangs. The visit to Betsy Ground was part of an outreach to region six. Let's now join my colleague Alexis Rodney, who reports from another part of the region. Thank you, Natasha. A protest organized by the opposition at Zambia, Mibikuri, and the quarantine turned out to be an engagement session with Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Basil Williams. The small group turned up with placards, but soon enough softened and expressed some concerns with the Attorney General. The farmer is really a different person. And he's very a, a, a drop because the trench problem is different. You know, the trench problem, the most important thing is clean like this. Mm. It's all right. You can set a formula and draw water. You don't get a problem. You don't require nobody. When you get trench, you don't require nobody. You set a form, you draw water. You don't get a problem. You don't get a problem. The hybrid one, that really clever. The water users only handle the secondary canals. The main canals are still uh, handled by the uh, NDI. You understand? So they're not handling it? No. no the main, since, since, after the bridge since, come, since oh, you last, pass through the, the main. Since uh -huh. last year. The front part clean was real thin, and they stopped. Since last, the made, the part, since last year, last year, no the maintenance work was done. You know, I'm here on a government outreach to so exactly learn and understand what problems you have. So is that the problem? Most yeah. problem in Blackwater personnel. The Attorney General, along with Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Karen Cummings, visited the community today as part of a region-wide government outreach. We are doing all that we can to ensure that each and every Guyanese has equal and equitable access to the best possible public health care. We have taken portable drinking water to communities that have never thought would it be possible. We are constantly working to improve the lives of all our people 
but it remains a work in progress and, and we continue to work. So there was no happiness under the last government. And who forget the past, they say it's condemned to repeat it. Don't let them fool you, you must get good memory. People were poured throughout this country. You don't even talk about Tiger Bay and them place in the city. Because it's only a certain clique got the wealth of this land. Let's now join communication officer Ayana George at Glasgow Village on the East Bank of Berbice. Thank you, Alexis. And here at Glasgow Community on East Bank Berbice, the residents are pleased as they're experiencing improved roads and the installation of more than 300 lights in their community. And they are also very optimistic for future developments. At a meeting held at the Glasgow Multipurpose Centre, the residents were not hesitant to speak of the transformation that has taken place in the community. Gone with the days that we've been promised so much. And we all know that the road used to just be a little chopped up stuff. And now thanks be to God and the government that we have now, we have road that if we have a patient or we have anybody sick, in minutes we could be to the hospital. We have to give our praise to this government because they've been doing stuff. And things won't happen overnight. There is a lot more to be done and they will get to it, it's just time. So I am grateful. Among recent developments in the community highlighted by the residents are the installations of more than 300 streetlights, improved drainage and irrigation system, and the recent commissioning of a blocks-making machine. Member of Parliament, Honorable Barbara Pilgrim, who was a part of the meeting, told the residents that the government will continue to work with the people of Glasgow towards bettering their lives. Here's to Shaquille. Thank you, Ayana. Here at the public spirited meeting in Rose Hall, Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson announced plans to install additional street lights within the township. We're starting work on a change out for um, Rose Hall on Sunday the 18th to fully light these corridors. And I've been told that we have given your R, your municipality, 40 additional LED lights. So in total, we've given you all. The, this township has 70. A number of residents shared their thoughts on this new addition to their community. Well, I hope that they put it, put it, put it in quickly. And if they, if they do put it 30, well, it'll be good for the community because we need lights. Because sometimes this place are very dark at nights, so we need the lights. It's really, really a great idea because people really enjoy the lights after so many years. The Public Infrastructure Minister also spoke about ongoing works with respect to road upgrades. Second Cross Street, Phase 2, uh -huh, at the other side. And, and we are doing some other um, small miscellaneous roads in the area. Uh, so that I know that it, it's already earmarked for Rose Hall. We, we, we had certain small requests that we are going to look at already. Let's now turn our attention to Delicia Haynes, who's reporting from Caribbean. Thank you, Shaquille. I'm standing here at an old selling in Caribbean where residents of Burby say it was a hot spot for trade in the past. Now, residents believe that with central government's intervention into the workings of the town council in Caribbean, that better development will be fostered in the area. The development in Caribbean, it's very stagnant because not, not because of the government, but because of the lack of the efficientness of the council and the council is run by the PPP. The PPP is stagnating local development, not something huge or something big. It's little things like cleaning of drains, uh, maintenance of street. All these little things means a lot to people. And they have not been able to deliver any way whatsoever on rates and taxes. And it's something that they have been staggering um, over the many years that they don't want an evaluation, they don't want an increase, and so the people of Caribbean continue to suffer. Our concern here is that we would like to see central government use some other method in having development in this area that can be done either directly through the ministry of communities or maybe directly through the Ministry of Infrastructure so that we don't have to beg the council. If you are in charge of a town or a community or a village, 
if you are in charge of 12,000 people or 500 people, isn't it your duty to ensure that things are okay with your people? I just heard that how many street lights? 200 street lights were refused? Why? Why? That is nonsense. That is not caring for the people. And that is one thing this government, that is our, the way we work, we care. Many times when we go into communities, you know what is be the common cry? Oh, ministers, when we road fixing. Ministers, we need street lamps. Ministers, we need this, we need that. And majority of the complaints are at the local level. That is why you have to hold your local representatives accountable. I now hand you over to Senior Communications Officer Felicia Valenzuela and she will be concluding this Info Hub special report. Residents of nearby villages such as Lighttown, Mara, Platanka and Highbury had what can be described as a very fruitful meeting with the Honorable Rafael Trotman, the Minister of Natural Resources. He's back. He's back. Everyone is in our family. And when it's without training, we can't get nothing. We need that those excavators right now to, to help the farmers up on the East Bank. Right now, two excavators government get their um, the NDIA excavators. Our main concern in Lighton is drainage. I'm aware that NDIA was here recently. I don't know if they met anyone of you, but I believe that they've started the survey that, that has to be done. Um, so I'm going to follow up, but I don't believe that your cries have fallen deaf ears. You have a road, and I know that there was a struggle for your road. But as I said, I recognize it. You have a road, but you want other things. You're entitled to other things. We ensure that you got, you got your road. Now we have to follow through with drainage. On the matter of regional and general elections, Minister Trotman said government is guarding against irregularities and allegations of fraud, hence the need for house-to-house -house registration. From 1964 to now, every election in Ghana has been accompanied by accusations of fraud or irregularity or some kind of mischief or confusion or in some cases lawlessness. And this is why it's so important to have a credible list of electors. As we wrap up the Region 6 outreach coverage from New Amsterdam to Crabwood Creek, we encourage you to stay tuned to dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram for further details on government services and information. I'm Felicia Valenzuela. Goodbye.